notre histoire s'écrit ici. Ici, c'est Paris. After days, weeks, months, years of speculation, Kylian Mbappe will stay at PSG. It was confirmed today. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined by Craig Burley. We also welcome to the program Jan and Gad. We'll be here in a moment. Confirmation then, till 2025, Kylian Mbappe remains a PSG player and becomes very, very rich in the process. As promised, then, Gab and Jules are with us. But, Craig, I'm kind of drawn to you first. First, just to get your initial reaction Jules. to it. Jan. Jules. Oh, sorry, Jan. Jules. Jan and Gavin right. here. Where is Jules, by the way? Uh, he's partying, uh, isn't he? He's, he's loving it. He's absolutely <laughs> loving it. <laughs> Brian, Brian, Brian Thomas. How are you? Where's Jules when you need him, man? You know what I mean? On the big day, yeah. he's nowhere to be seen. He'll be off earning some coins somewhere uh, I don't else. Imagine it. Oh, but I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little shocked, actually. Uh, look. Everybody makes a decision for whatever reasons. We talked on yesterday's show, as we've talked on many shows. Real Madrid and Barcelona in particular are two of the pinnacle clubs in this sport. Not many get a chance to go to them. Not many get a chance to go there as a Galactico. Not many get a chance there to go, to go there as the club's evolving and stamp your authority in one of the great leagues in Europe at one of the great clubs and I think it's an awful shame for him that he's not going to do that quite frankly from my own point of view I look forward to to see what he does in the Champions League and I couldn't give a stuff what he does in France in Ligue 1 and I think that will be that's not an ignorant view I think that will be the view of a lot of people and that's not to say that it's not important to him, it's not important in France, I'm, I'm, of course it is, I'm sure it is, Ligue 1. But outside of France it doesn't really travel and it doesn't really resonate and I felt that he was going to go in there and really make another step in his career at one of the most pressurised clubs on the planet. And for whatever reason, finances or home life or home country, whatever it is, he's decided not to do it. And I'm a little disappointed I'm not going to be seeing him playing in La Liga next year. You agree, Jan? Well, I said on the show many months ago that I reminded you today, Dan, that I, I had always had a feeling that he would stay in Paris. because, And that was down to the Qatari owners coming up the Qatari World Cup now. There was no way they would let him go. Somehow they would find a way to do it. I, I follow a lot of what uh, Dan is, uh, sorry, uh, Craig is saying, but but still, this is a day from wrong names today, <laughs> Brian. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I understand what Craig is saying. But like he's saying, there are so many reasons for decisions. The, the young lad is a world champion. He's, he has achieved th- things. He, when he's finished with his career, he's probably still, he, he, uh, probably, he is still a young man. And I think this is all down to, to timing. I don't buy this financial kind of thing because I think that, yes, he will have an unbelievable contract in Paris now, but he would have got a great, great contract in Madrid as well. So I don't think that would have made the, the big thing. Uh, he will be now heading a big, big project called PSG. PSG will be a project for many, many years now. They've been in the final, remember, in, in the Champions League, so they're not so far off. But I think that the rest of the neutral football world would love to see him going to Real Madrid and, and take the next step, playing with Benzema, playing with all the great players there. Uh, but I think we have to respect his decision. And I, I don't think it's just down to finances. But just from a footballing perspective, Jan, the best player in the world you want to see week in, week out being tested, don't you? Yeah, it's a fair point, but it, I, I, I think it's hard to sit here and, and talk uh, a league down. We can say you can go to Spain and there are some easy games there too. Yes, you can't compare the league uh, at all, but my point is as PSG has been very close to winning the Champions League, uh, if you compare with some English club, they were very, very close to win, win the Champions League. So, so I think it's down to, 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 to timing. Uh, as I said all the time, Dan, Qatari owners, PSG, Qatari World Cup coming up in December, I think that somehow that has been, that has been the case. They, 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 they just need, had, just had to do something. And, uh, 
I think is more embarrassing this uh, suing thing from the Spanish Football League or whatever come out of there than he's signing for, for three years in Paris. Yeah, we'll just address that a little later on. Gab, how much was money a factor in this? What sort of figures are we talking here? There's so many figures being bandied about. Um, what we understand from, from the Paris Saint-Germain end is that they're talking 40 million euros a year, which I better transfer it weekly into pounds off the top of my head to, to give you a, a general sense. It, it's something in the order of 700, 800,000 pounds a week. It's basically <clears throat> round about Gareth Bale type money. Um, that's what the, they're saying on the Paris Saint-Germain end. Um, elsewhere, people are throwing out much bigger numbers. They're talking about massive signing bonuses. This will all come out in the wash, how much he's actually making, because there's pretty strict oversight in France, and uh, uh, we'll see what the number is. Um, I, I, like Jan, I struggle with this to kind of understand it. Um, I, it seems strange to me that, you know, whatever the number is, He's was going to make an enormous amount of money in Madrid as well, and he's young, and he would have had more commercial opportunities. Uh, he would have had his own image rights. Um, unless there's something that we don't know, I, I find it difficult to believe that the money was a driving force for this change of heart. And the problem is, if you think that it was the Qataris pressuring him, putting a, you know, with the World Cup coming up, and maybe putting something else on the table, guys, um, then why string it out until now? Why string it out until the middle of May? That, to me, makes no sense to me uh, either. So uh, I'm at a loss here on many fronts. Um, what, what I'm not at a loss at, though, is, you know, the guy is from Paris. He obviously feels that there's a bond there. I think that matters as well. The interesting thing is going to be what happens after the World Cup in Doha. A lot of people believe the circus is going to leave town. Uh, financial fair play is kicking in, uh, the, the new version from 2023. Um, I appreciate Lionel Messi will presumably be gone by then, but still, I, I don't see how you square the books when, when you've spent these enormous amounts of money. Seems to me that he's just, I don't know, in some sense in a very comfortable zone there. The best, the best players head to the best leagues, generally. Not always, there's always an anomaly somewhere, some outlier who you will know, just stay. But generally, the best players, the best French players, have always gravitated, you know, Platini mm. to Italy, Zidane to Italy and Spain, Benzema. I mean, the list goes on. It can go back years. Uh, because they are the best leagues, and that's where they go, and they test themselves, and they push themselves. Uh, so I'm kind of disappointed in a way, from that perspective, that it just seems, as the guy said, it can't all have been about money, I would like to think. But I, I don't know, he's done what he's done in France and what else has he to do in France? Right. He's won league yeah, on. I, they haven't won, the, there's no project Craig, there because Messi, the, no, what? No, no, I, I was just going to say, in, in terms of the World Cup in Doha, there is another theory being floated out there, uh, which is quite simply, he wants to win another World Cup. He wants to win that World Cup in, in, in Doha. And, you know, the nice thing about staying at Paris Saint-Germain is that really until December, it's fairly low key, right? Uh, you got some Champions League group games and pretty much that's it. You don't have uh, the stress, the goldfish bowl of being um, at the Bernabeu uh, with all the media attention and everything that that, that, that brings and the ju early judgments and so on. So... If somehow he is prioritizing the World Cup, and some people have suggested this, um, that in some ways this makes a lot of sense because Paris Saint-Germain's tough games will come in the knockout stages, and that's going to be after the World Cup, and then maybe a year from now you reevaluate. That, that's the only other thing that you know I can think of from a sporting side uh, to help to help explain this. I got a feeling, Dan. Uh, I got a feeling when I'm a 90, 90s footballer from England. I got that Alan Shura feeling when he get, went from Blackburn to Newcastle. He had the offer to go to Manchester United. He knew that he would win a lot of 
titles there, but there were other reasons. He wanted to come home. He wanted to be a boyhood. Uh, where, where he wanted to have that number nine shirt and everything. So maybe, and I think that is the, the maybe thing we don't know a lot about, how, how attached he is to Paris, how he attached to his, his neighborhood, he's attached to his family and friends and all that. And maybe try to explain uh, some of this because... All the, all the others, we would have said yes to Real Madrid when you when you see it from a sports uh, perspective. Why is it taking so long to make this decision, though? Because if it's not about money, why is it taking so long? You right. could have wrapped this up a while ago. PSG could have stopped sweating yeah. on it. Real Madrid could have looked at other irons in the fire, which I'm hoping they still have, because that's right. what every good club should do, is don't put all your eggs in one basket. But it seems like they put a, a hell of a lot yep. of eggs in this particular basket yeah. but you know why, why it's a bit of a head scratcher why he's, he's, he's leaving it as long as he is and, and you know the PA, and I don't know I don't know if a player thinks that way about you know when, you, when you're coming up to a World Cup how, what my league games are going to be because you never know what's going to happen I mean you could break a leg first game of the season nothing to do with you and all of a sudden you're out for a year uh, so I, I, I just find it a little strange and also I just don't see a project anymore at PSG. I see a bits and bobs club who are, uh, you know, floating from one uh, yeah, season to exactly. another. The Lionel Messi thing, and we talked about it with Kay on yesterday's show. Lionel Messi's at, at best, at best, twelve months away from taking a, a long time holiday yep. over here in Miami. Mm-hmm. And I think we've seen from this season, maybe no, not not all through fault of his own, he's definitely scaling down. His performances are not the same. He's had injuries. I don't think the desire's quite there. Mother Nature's taken its course for him. It does for everybody. And he's already talking about other avenues, particularly here in America. So that's not really a project for Kylian Mbappe, just to stay there for another 12 months, 18 months to play with Lionel Messi. It's not Lionel Messi uh, that was driving the Pep Guardiola side of 2011 and, and 12 and whatever. So, yeah, it's... It's, I'm sure, pleasing for the French public, those that support Paris, Paris Saint-Germain. But as I say, until the Champions League comes round, nobody will really bat an eyelid about what Kylian Mbappe's doing. And clearly, he's not fussed about that. Uh, Gab, obviously, we've heard the likes of Unai Emery, Thomas Tuchel, talking about the power that players have at that club. And it seems like they're just completely now doubling down on that in that Mbappe reportedly will have a say on who will come in, who will be the new coach, who will replace Leonardo because he, he doesn't get on with him. It's just going to be the Mbappe show. Yeah, I don't believe any of that. I, 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 I've seen those reports too that he's been handed, you know, he's going to choose the new director of football and choose the new manager and make the lineup and design the new uniform and the club anthem and they'll rename the state. I, I just don't, that just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I don't think that's. I don't think that's credible. Will they consult him? Of course, I'm sure they will consult him. Um, But that's why it's also difficult to accept. I mean, Craig touched upon this, the idea that he's staying at Paris Saint-Germain for the project. I mean, if it's for the project, then you don't commit for three years, you commit for five years um, if you believe that there's a project there. But of course, there is no project because you don't have a manager for next season. Uh, I mean, I'll be shocked if Pochettino is still there this time next week. Uh, you probably don't have a director of football, but again, I'll be shocked if Leonardo's still around. So you have to hire two key figures. Um, we've had the Messi situation we've touched upon. We've had the Neymar situation we've touched upon. And by the way, Messi and Neymar's motivation in those league games um, and Champions League games leading up to the World Cup, which will you know may well be their final World Cup, you would have to really, really question. Mm. So I, I think... You know, arguing that it's about the project, um, I think it just makes you look silly. If on top of that you're going to double down and say that, oh, they've handed the, you know, they've sold the club uh, to to Mbappe and he gets to decide everything, I don't buy that for one second. Um, I, I don't, I don't think it's that at all. There's two times I want to be a fly in the wall this year. Really? Yeah. The first time was from Florentino Perez realised that the uh, Super League was absolutely crumbling in front of his eyes. And yep. the second time yep. is when the phone rang. Well, apparently he got a WhatsApp message from Mbappe saying, thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, oh. Gab, has, has Mbappe just played a blinder here and just kind of played PSG off with Real Madrid to get the best deal? Again, we don't know these numbers, so it's really hard to say. We don't know um, to what degree 
they're, they're there to his advantage. Um, well, we know that we know they're good numbers, Gab. We know they're sensational that numbers, and we know they're better numbers than they would have been if there was just one club that had a contract on the table. Was he ever interested yeah. in Real Madrid, or was just this all hot okay, air? Absolutely. Or all just the perfect I, kind of negotiating tool. I think. I think 100% he was interested in uh, in Real Madrid. Um, I don't think there's any question of the amount of time and resources they, 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 they devoted to it. And by the way, these things all happen in a, in, in a vacuum. I'm sure Jan can weigh in on this, but a big part of the reason why Real Madrid didn't move aggressively for, for Erling Haaland this summer was because they said, all right, we can't commit this much money in one go. Uh, you know, there was even suggestions that they tried to persuade Dortmund or, or Holland to stay at Dortmund for another year and then we'll get Mbappe this year and Holland next year. And, you know, they simply couldn't go for both. And now in the meantime, what's happened is Manchester City, maybe they knew something we didn't, they snuck in there right away with, with Holland. He's put pen to paper. And now, of course, from Real Madrid's perspective, um, you know, they're left with nothing. Or, I mean, they're left with nothing. They're left with a team that's won the league and that's in the Champions League final. But, you know, no Mbappe. I know Holland this summer, mm. and so you have to start scrambling. Um, so these pieces are all connected. La Liga and Real Madrid have taken it extremely well, as you would imagine. Um, they are threatening to sue uh, PSG. This is what Tebas had to say. What PSG is going to do by renewing Mbappe with large amounts of money after giving losses of 700 million euros in recent seasons and having more than 600 million in salary is an insult to football. Al Khalifi is a dangerous, is as dangerous as the Super League. Ah, oh, Super League's back in the conversation. Um, Gab, a lot of people have messaged and of the extra time questions are asking how how can PSG get away with this all right so the short answer is that financial fair play is suspended it's been suspended <laughs> since the pandemic they agreed on a new model of it uh, and it's going to come back in in 2023 um, so for this season at least they're good and if Qatar does all move out of town and uh, batten down the hatches um, after the World Cup then it's not really going to matter. They're not really going to care what happens. Um, that's why I think Tebas would have a point if the rules were in place and he felt that they weren't being enforced. There is a point to be made, I think, and maybe they're setting their stall out, saying, hey, once 2023 comes around, are we going to start enforcing the rules in a serious way? Because there's no way that, that Paris Saint-Germain can do this sustainably. Uh, they lost 225 million euros in the 2021 season. They lost 130 million the year before that. 21-22, um, we don't know how much they lost, but it's sure to be an enormous amount because, hey, look, they added Messi and Donnarumma and Ashraf Hakimi and Danilo and Vinaldo. Um, so we're pretty sure that they lost an enormous amount of money again this year. So there's no way that they can be compliant with UEFA's financial fair play. But there is no UEFA financial fair play right now. Uh, um, uh, so that's why I think... It's going to come up short, but at some point they're going to have to cross this bridge. It's going to pop but, up. But what, 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 <laughs> no, it's, going, it's going to pop. Financial fair play is going to pop back up in 2023 as Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to be working them. Hello, we're back. We're back Hello. But, but, Worst sequel ever. It, it is interesting that uh, Al Khalafi, the uh, Khalafi, the uh, the guy at PSG, he can talk to the guy who runs the league in Europe. Aha. That's himself. And then he can talk to the Qataris who's doing the next World Cup. Aha! He's a part of that as well. So I think that is down to a, a funny... It's just like a joke now, well, what, what is going on. I think that the, the letter or the he, mail or yeah, whatever they're doing these he, days... Yes. Say, Gab. Yeah, you, you, you forgot. There's one other guy you can talk to. Jan, Nasser Khalifi can also talk to uh, the man who's, who runs B in Sport and therefore buys a big chunk of the Champions League TV rights and helps yeah. fund UEFA that way. And that man, of course, is also Nasser al Khalifa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, but it good, the good thing about this is that, like, the year that they are supposedly they're going to sign Mbappé, they suspend financial fair play, okay? And make this joke even worse, is that the Spain, who's done this Galactico Super League thing now for years, they are sending a letter. I mean, we don't need comedians anymore. They are in football. We don't need them. These are, these well, are the jokes. It, I, 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 think that we, I think we have to be fair to Tebas and to Spain here because 
La Liga in, introduced their own version of, of spending limits. And I think whatever else you may think of Tebas, they have enforced them. And they've enforced them in a very tough way. You can just go and ask um, any Barcelona fan uh, about that about the cuts and the sacrifice they had to make and the players that they had to sell and so on. Now, whether this continues or not, we'll see. But I think from Tebas' perspective is, we put in these spending limits to make our, our league viable and so on. We had the courage to go and take on uh, a club like Barcelona, whereas in the past we could have just looked the other way and been like, hey, you want to sign another Trincao? Here you go, and sure, you know, extend Messi's deal at infinitum. Um, but instead, you know, there's a feeling in Spain that we have tough rules, and we've lived by those tough rules, and we took one of our two biggest clubs to the brink of insolvency to enforce those rules. Yeah. Now we expect Paris Saint-Germain to do the same. But the problem is, different rules in France. But the problem is, Gab, if I, if I may say, and that is a fair point, what you're saying, and if they try to clean up the football, is good. But just, just today, there was in that, there was the first bid from Barcelona, who has no money, for a 34-year-old German <laughs> uh, player, or a Polish player called Robert Lewandowski. That was 32 million euro. And uh, it may go up to 40, yeah. 50. And that's from a club who has no money. So uh, I think that is the funny thing. Right. And you signing players on a free. I mean, never ha have a player on free be more expensive than they are now. Alaba from Bayern Munich. We know his numbers. <laughs> Rudiger is not coming for free from Chelsea, is he? And so on and so on. That was my point. I, I think that... The, the, the ones in charge, they have uh, the, best, the best will to do it, but still, then they can't sign any player in the world. They were after Haaland as well. They wouldn't have got him on a free, the Spanish football. The money situation is complex, and I generally, as all you guys know, don't really get too involved in uh, other people's business in terms of financial fair play, as Gab well knows. That's a very fair, nice way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I, I just think from a football decision, I don't think, for me, this is not a very good decision, I think, from a football perspective. Uh, I think you want to see the best players in the best leagues and the best teams competing in every week, and we're not going to see that now. That's a shame. Uh, so I think just from a football perspective, uh, it's slightly disappointing or very disappointing. I mean, it could have been Real Madrid, it could have been Barca, it could have been Bayern Munich, it could have been... Uh, Milan or Juve or, or Chelsea or City or Liverpool, I don't really care. But I just, from a football perspective, staying in France just smells to me as if I'm very, very comfortable. Real Madrid throwing their toys out the pram, though, it's kind of difficult to feel sorry for well, them given what, what has happened in the past. Well, listen, at the end of the day, that's what transfers are all about. That's what discussions and talks are all about. You don't always get what you think you're going to get. Now, the financial side of it is a different story, and Gab's pointed that out. They're running a different ship in Spain now, and they have enforced that. Uh, and we've seen it firsthand this year. We've discussed Barcelona uh, almost all season, and we saw at the start of the season how perilous it was for them with people they couldn't even register that they'd signed. So they have enforced that. However, as Gab mentioned, the rules elsewhere are, are not... The, it's not the same, so... The, the trouble is, is because you're doing one thing doesn't mean other people are going to do the same thing. So it's football, it's transfers, it's decisions. And it, ultimately, the player has made a decision. This is not just about money. Kylian Mbappe, as an individual here, you can talk about the ownership and the club and spending this and offering them this. The money, at some point, has to be inconsequential because it's so much right it's so much money and Real Madrid were offering them a really good stick as well he's made a decision you can't sue the player for making a decision and that's what we've got here a guy who's decided to stay I think disappointingly in Paris but it's, it's an important point that Gab made uh, Dan if I may it's, it's about the Haaland thing and the Mbappé thing because you put a lot of thought into which club you will go to, and everybody expected Mbappé to do his decisions earlier. 
to see where it's going. And, and I guess that everybody now, this dynamic that he will wait so long to make his decision, uh, there's going to be a lot of influence to a lot of players because now Real Madrid need, need another striker. Uh, will Lewandowski, I don't think Lewandowski will go to, to Real Madrid now that he's been flirting so much with Barcelona, but it was always a dream of, of him playing for Real Madrid. That discussion will be up again. And back in, we expected Haaland's decision to be to be made back in the beginning of April. That took took time. That, that could be one of the reasons because Mbappé needed to decide. He was the key here. And he's been waiting and waiting on that. So I think there's going to be interesting to see what kind of contract he's done. That must be your job, Gab, to find out. But um, you, you maybe find a contract that will have a clause after one year, if that's going to happen, and so on and yeah. so on. Uh, a lot more talk on Mbappe uh, on extra time. Uh, Gavin Yan will be back to answer your questions there. Um, Craig, of course, will be with us as well. Meanwhile, away from Kylian Mbappe is the final day of action at the Premier League on Sunday with still the title to be decided. Of course, it's all in Manchester City's hands. A victory against Aston Villa will see them retain the championship. Meanwhile, if they drop points and Liverpool get that win at Anfield against Wolves, then it'll be Liverpool who are champions. Uh, this is what Pep Guardiola had to say uh, about the Premier League. It's more difficult than the Champions League. Winning 38 games is different from winning six or seven. Of course, City looking to make it four out of the last <laughs> five. Yeah, what are you laughing at? I'm just laughing at because my maths don't go up here. If it's easier to win the Champions League than the Premier League, why doesn't he win the Champions League then? Uh, I, I don't get it. But uh, that's another thing. Uh, although I, he has a point. <laughs> he has a point, though. I understand what he's saying, but it's just funny again that he's coming from Pep Guardiola. But uh, it's going to be an unbelievable day tomorrow, and I guess Pep Guardiola, like everybody else, will be very, very nervous tonight. Is he right? We discussed on yesterday's show a couple of uh, ex-Man United players. Right. Right. Uh, Evra and uh, Berbatov suggesting that Guardiola cannot handle and manage any players with personality and ego and big players and yeah. uh, I just think that's absolute nonsense, he's done it brilliantly yeah, yeah. The, the Champions League is a, is a, a has been a bugbear for, for, for his time at Man City and his time at, at uh, Bayern Munich and there's a lot of people that continue to throw that mud uh, at Guardiola and, and I suppose until he, he does it outside uh, Bassa, that will continue. Uh, however, you know, you look at the players that he's worked with, he's managed, that he's kept happy, and that's the big part of it as well. He's not only managing these big clubs, but to keep, and I suppose Jurgen Klopp's in the same scenario, to keep all these players who are effectively starting players who are not starting, if that makes sense. You know, like Gundogan, sometimes Mares, sometimes Sterling, sometimes Foden, Gabriel Jesus, all these players, to keep them happy and in a frame of mind that when you do need them and you do rotate, they come in and their attitude is fantastic, I think speaks volume to, to his management. I think it would be nonsense and, and was nonsense to suggest that he can't cope with anybody with a personality as if Vincent Company, Kevin De Bruyne uh, <laughs> et al don't have personalities I expect them to win tomorrow I don't think it'll be simplistic because I think Villa will put up a real fight and not because Steven Gerrard is an ex-Liverpool player because you always want to finish the season strongly and I think for those reasons Liverpool are going to have to put a really strong team out against Wolves and we know they've got Yep. This Champions League final We know they've got players carrying niggles We know they've got players that have played a lot of games And are fatigued, they've been in every competition But I don't think they can It's going to be a difficult choice for Jurgen Klopp Because He wants to think about the week after But he wants to think about If there's a potential slip up At the Etihad But then you've got all these injuries So that's going to be a real difficult team for him For, for Guardiola it's simple He picks his best 11 and they go for it is the Premier League harder to win the Champions League? Well, I think if you were to ask Liverpool, they'd say yes. Liverpool have had success uh, in recent years in the Champions League. They've had success recently in the Champions League, uh, winning it and losing it, but getting there. But I've only been over the line once in the Premier League yeah. recently. So I, it's a difficult one. I mean, it's a bit like we talk, we've seen Man City yeah. lose at Wembley to Wigan in the FA Cup. Cup competitions sometimes throw up 
serious anomalies. Generally, 38 games or whatever it is in whatever league you follow is a true guide to who is the best team. I think it's a 50-50 call to say what is more difficult. Uh, Gav, this is right up your street. You've said this for many years now, that the Champions League is a lottery. Yeah, let me make this very, very simple, right? Um, if you're the best team in the league, it's easier to win a league than it is to win a Champions League for the reasons that Craig said, that because there's so many individual games where you can slip up and then you go out because it's a knockout competition. If you have a, a, a horrendous game or even a horrendous month in the Premier League and you're the best team, um, you can still win it. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're a bad team, then it's hard to win both, but then it's easier to win uh, to win the Champions League. But if you're, you know, the best team in your league, it's certainly easier to win uh, to win the Premier League uh, than it is to win to win the Champions League. I don't think there's any argument there because over 38 games, the best or second best team generally win it. Uh, Jan, you've been back in Liverpool right from the start. You changed your mind yet? Yeah. No, I haven't. Uh, I, uh, I've thought this through, as, as I do you, Dan. I've had I'm going into uh, my temple of thoughts. Uh, and <laughs> no I've, one wants to go in that I, temple. It's very, very <laughs> empty, very spacious. I, uh, I, I, I am a man of uh, things that happen for a reason. That Steven Gerrard will go back, uh, yes, for different reasons. Not that Steven Gerrard is so desperate for Liverpool to win the league, as I guess he is as well. But it's just like football. Uh, they, they write their own rules. Uh, I can see the headlines. I can see the history. We will think back of that Sunday when Steven Gerrard gave Liverpool the Premier League title. Just watch tomorrow. You'll see. Wow. Jan's sticking to his guns. Uh, Gab, are you, you believing? Have you been in Jan's temple? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to go into Jan's temple and, uh, and drink some of Jan's Kool-Aid because, you know what, it would make for a tremendous story. But I think the facts are, and I, re I realize everybody wants to win the end the season on a high, but the Wolves have zero to play for. Uh, Liverpool are, are bruised and battered um, through injuries. Uh, you know, even, I know he praised all of the Ferraris in the garage, but, you know, winning 2-1 away to um, the Southampton B team uh, as they did in midweek with, with, with your B team tells me that you know, your B team is nowhere near as good as your A team. Mm. And I think you're looking ahead to the Champions League final as well. And of course, if they both win, then City are champions. So all those things together, it would have to be City screwing up. Uh, the only reason I would want that to happen is that um, is if it happens because another defense, some more defenders get injured and sent off, and then I'd be vindicated uh, with my uh, the argument that I was ridiculed for about City's depth and the decision to go with just 17 outfield players. No, people had forgot about that guy, but you keep bringing it up. You should never bring this. Doesn't things. sound like ridicule. I don't yeah. think we'll never do that to you, Gab, man of your stature. Uh, meanwhile, Champions League still to be decided as well. Um, for Spurs, it's, oh, it's simple, isn't it? Don't lose. Yeah, particularly now Everton are safe, so Arsenal, that, that should be an easier game. But yeah, yeah, I think... Norwich City, relegated, cannon fodder. Yeah. 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 I mean, this would be I'm a, not so this would be a holy I, blowing it up of Tottenham or not to take advantage of this. It would be the I've ultimate so Spurs etc. etc. Cetera, et cetera. Go on, yeah. Exactly, I like I've got so many Tottenham friends, they won't believe you, Craig. They won't sleep an hour tonight. They know this is so typical Tottenham. This is so typical Tottenham to lose 1-0 for some <laughs> long shot from somewhere. And Arsenal will win in the last minute. All Josh my Sargent. Spurs friends are thinking the same. Yeah, exactly. With an overhead kick or something. They know that. The Spurs people know that. You, they, 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 they won't know it before. It's, it's 100%. There's no chance that they will be relaxing tonight. Uh, neither, of course, will be the fans of Burnley or Leeds as well. Uh, fate is in Burnley's hand, basically. They just have to match the Leeds result and they will be fine. Um, I forgot who they're playing. Who's everyone playing? Leeds are playing Brentford. Le Leeds got Brentford away and Burnley at home against Newcastle. Newcastle. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I suppose... Well, I mean, if you're Burnley, you've got to try and get, get that victory, haven't you? Obviously... Both have had decent seasons in the end. Newcastle have came on strong since the new signings and the change of manager. Uh, Brentford under Thomas Frank, first season in the Premier League. I think that's an amazing job. But both are safe. And, as, and I suppose if you're Leeds, in particular, uh, 
You're playing a team who have just been promoted, playing a team who don't have a lot to play for now. So you would think that they have a better chance of getting a result, but I just feel Burnley are set up more to be able to scratch out a point or whatever it is they need. I just Leeds have been so haphazard. I just, I just don't know what we're going to get from them. So I think Burnley might just get enough, and it could be a point. Who you got, Gab? You know what? I, I would have said Leeds, and I've been banging the Leeds drum all along um, because I think they're more talented, they're more unpredictable, and you know it's three points for a win and one point for a draw. Um, oh! And so I think risk taking is rewarded. <laughs> <laughs> however, however, after seeing Newcastle, the way they celebrated at St. James Park, it, uh, I, and rightly so, after beating Arsenal on Monday, I kind of thought, man, these guys, they look as if their season has just ended and they're all ready to go on holiday. Um, I hope for Leeds' sake that, that, that I'm wrong, um, because obviously I think Newcastle present more of a challenge. I actually think Leeds match up very well with Brentford in terms of style of play. I think Brentford's got the same thing. They've had a successful season. I think they've got the on the beach mentality. Um, <clears throat> I can see Leeds winning. Problem is, I can see Burnley winning as well. The problem uh, is, is, is uh, you know, when you think back and you don't think too much about it at the time, I suppose, when they got walloped for the second year in a row. I think it was the first game of the season at Old Trafford. And then I think in Bielsa's last three games or there, but whatever it is, they got walloped yeah, by umpteen, shit goals, um, um, umpteen amount of goals. And you think, well, and it could come down to it. It could come down to the fact that they've been just losing goals for fun and they were so open and yeah, it was great and wow, this is, you know, this is the Bielsa way and fantastic, we attack and we do this and obviously they lost Bamford so the, their goals at the other end has been diminished so that's not helped. But all those goals that they've shipped, those cheap ones in the end, could be the difference between them staying in this division yep. and not. Uh, we'll of course be looking back at all of the action the final day of the Premier League and indeed La Liga on the next edition of ESPN FC. FC. It's said to be a busy show. A be sure to join us. Having trouble speaking today. <laughs> it's Saturday, isn't it? Leipzig recorded their first ever piece of silverware in the club's history, beating Freiburg on penalties after it finished 1-1 in the German Cup final. Jan, how big a statement then is this from Leipzig going forward? It's a big statement for them to win that first trophy, uh, absolutely. And we were talking about Lees with Jesse March, he, he was leaving them and Tedesco came in and put them into uh, winning a trophy, getting him into Champions League, done a fantastic job there. This is the third time they've been in the final. A guy called Ralf Ragnick and another guy called Julian Nagelsmann never managed to, to do that. So that is a, is a main, main thing. But it was an interesting final because there was a lot of thing going on. First, Eggestein, the, the first goal of Freiburg was a clear handball from Shalai when the ball was passed back. Uh, went to, uh, and nothing happened and they got a 1-0. Uh, I'm not 100% agree with, uh, with Craig that that red card was so clear. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that he is uh, uh, kicking his own feet, but that is another uh, thing we can discuss another day. And then, of course, Freiburg, the Charmant team from, from Freiburg, which Streich has been there for years and years. And then they, when it coming to penalties and, and, the, and the commentator said that Streich has been in, in uni, junior finals with Freiburg and they always win in the penalties. And then Captain Günther was the first one missing and he's, he's been with Streich <laughs> all his life. And that is, uh, that is how football history uh, are made. Uh, and it's, it was a fantastic day in Berlin. I know we should stop saying that uh, there's only England who got a, a cup tradition. I mean, the cup tradition in Berlin fantastic and you saw the atmosphere as well great between two very different team with one kind of commercialized team against the charming Freiburg so the good and the bad was set up in, in Germany tonight sorry I didn't uh, that was the first time I'm seeing that replay there I'm very perturbed oh you have to you upset the Jans called you out <laughs> but obviously it, didn't, it might be a big competition in Germany but I, 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 I didn't well, I, I don't care nice. I've got enough, totally enough. so I, uh, I, I looked at me as if it was a little pool but I stand corrected okay all right then yeah. we'll move on um, away from that uh, this is what Xavi had to say about about uh, Lewandowski and his future. Lewandowski is an option. He said he wants to leave. There are negotiations. Uh, Oliver Kahn uh, responded saying, this isn't a question for us. Robert Lewandowski has a contract oh. until 2023 and he will fulfill it. Bayern is not and will not become a development club. 
we didn't be developing players in the 30s. <laughs> <laughs> well, like selling people in the 30s. Uh, so that's it, Jan. It's done. Lewandowski is going to be there until the end of his contract. <laughs> And tomorrow, you will have another show, then Oliver Kahn will say something else, then Haina, the president, will say something else, and Salah Hamasic yeah. will say something else. And Monday, they will change views again, and Robert Lewandowski is sitting in the dressing room talking Polish. That is the best, best Bild Zeitung story of the weekend, when he actually is talking on his phone, in the dressing room, in his native language, of course, and the only thing they can understand is FC Barcelona, FC Barcelona, FC Barcelona. This is going to be continued. But Bayern Munich can end up doing what they're doing at the moment. They're leaving, letting players go on free. So right. keep it for one more year. They're losing the best striker in the world on free. They lost David Alaba on a free. They lost Sule on a free. They lost Boateng on a free. And so on and so on. And those are the days in Munich at the moment. Uh, uh, Jan, you probably know Lewandowski better than any of us in a sense. Uh, how will he react if he's made to stay? Well, there is a fair thing to say that when he was told to stay in Dortmund uh, one year and then go on free to Bayern, he was fantastic. The problem then, he was a young, hungry player who saw that as a step. Now he's getting into his 34. He will think of his last contract two or three years, get it forward in time. And he will probably know that this is my last chance to get, get another adventure. So I don't think you can compare with that. He'll probably be professional, but I think that the way uh, Bayern Munich have handled this is scandalous. He asked for negotiations one year ago, one year ago. And they said, we got all under control and now no control at all. Go on, Gap. No, I just want to say uh, it, it's going to be really interesting. And, and uh, Oli Khan, of course, Jan is right. Uh, Oli Khan's the same guy who said, well, we have a plan B and a plan C and a plan D, yeah. you know, uh, <laughs> reference to Lewandowski's future. So, you know, it's like a you know, walking contradiction. Um, but the interesting thing, I think, is that is and we haven't mentioned them. And I don't want to upset Liverpool fans in this uh, in this moment in time and give them something else to think about vis-a-vis -vis Real Madrid, but stay tuned for this. Obviously, uh, with Mbappe not going, Real Madrid are sitting on a big pot of, pot of money, and I think realistically they need a third striker or a third forward to team up with Benzema and, and, and Vinicius. And, oh, gee, look, who is it that has two exceptional strikers who are both, like Lewandowski, one year away from free agency, and are also younger than Lewandowski, and are also wide players, unlike Lewandowski, and, of course, that's Mo Salah and Sadio Mane. Um, I, I, I will bet you dollars to donuts oh. that in the next week. Oh. That is the next big link that we're going to see in the press. And there's going to be English people saying, you're trying to destabilize, destabilize them ahead of the Champions League <laughs> final and so on. I think it's absolutely oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, inevitable. What sort of donuts, Cam? <laughs> um, I, 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 you know what? I kind of like those, those those jam donuts. Oh yeah. But I, I am flexible. The frosted ones are good too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Boston cream. Boston cream is my go-to. Well, nice. Yep. Is it? Um, I don't eat unhealthy food. Like <laughs> Your body's a temple. <laughs> Nuts and yeah. stuff. Uh, meanwhile, the Europa League, of course, of Eintracht Frankfurt win the final against Rangers. These were the scenes, of course, within the Frankfurt Stadium. 50,000 supporters uh, celebrating. Then, of course, we saw the celebrations afterwards as well in the press conference. And then the scenes were extraordinary, weren't they? As the team returned back to Germany. Uh, here they were. Look at this. Unbelievable stuff. Jan, where were you in this? <laughs> well, you know, uh, I will start with some technical thing. I was at the game, I was working at the game, and the night before, UEFA said, Jan, you can do the super flash, meaning I could be on the pitch and do my interviews. I don't do that often. It's the second time I've done it. I've done it in a Super Cup final before. And then, but they told me, you will go with the winner. So I, I had to have my former club to win that. So I was lucky enough to, to be able to do the interviews with the players. I got still got great connection with, with the club. A lot of my friends are there and a lot of the leaders I know very well. So that was an unbelievable experience to, to go with him. Uh, I was at the party till 3.30. 
And then they said, Jan, why don't you go with a plane back to Frankfurt? But then I have to stop. I, I didn't go back there. But it was unbelievable. With 200,000 people uh, meeting them in Frankfurt uh, on the Roma Platz. And you saw that. It was passionate. And it, it was good as well. It was a good final. You have to give also credit to, to Rangers. There were two sets of fans who made a fantastic atmosphere in Sevilla. And you saw in the stands because... I mean, people were buying tickets from everywhere. They said there were 150,000 people there and there were like 30,000 coming into the stadium from the two set of fans. And you saw, saw blue and white next to each other. And what I saw and what I heard, it was quite peacefully. So I think that was a fantastic final. And it was also fantastic for Eintracht Frankfurt to be kind of best of the rest. It's, the, it's a well-run club. It's, the, it's a team without big, big stars. Uh, so that was a great night. And you see behind me, now uh, my Frankfurt shirt is getting more and more goldish. I yeah, can see. yeah, that was that was pretty much on the outside of your shot back in the day. Just remembered about your Frankfurt <laughs> love. Uh, just a reminder, then, very much at the other end of the spectrum, of course, it's the battle to stay in the Bundesliga for Hertha Berlin. They're taking on Hamburg, the second leg of that tie. Of course, down one nil. Hertha's down one nil going into the tie. Two thirty Eastern on ESPN Plus. Leona, once again, your Women's Champions League winners after beating Barcelona by three goals to one in Turin. All of the action really happening in the first half where Leon would take a 3-0 lead. Barca getting one back before the break but couldn't add more to that tally in the second half. And Leon then win their eighth Champions League title. They've won six of the last seven finals. Well, let's go to Turin. Gemma was at the final. Gemma, this was all about the first half and that was so impressive. That opening 40 minutes from Leon was something special. Yes, it was, uh, Dan. They proved that they are better. They are the queens of Europe. And, and they, especially in the physicality, they were so much superior than, than Barcelona. They, they didn't have a chance. I, I think they also made uh, some mistakes on strategy and not, pushing, uh, not putting enough pressure. And, and probably we could wonder what happened if Oshoala, that she really shaked the, the attack in the second half where they couldn't really play because Olympique Lyon was trying and uh, not to l l let anything happen, not, not too many action. So they didn't have a chance and OL proved, I mean, they have the double of the budget than Barcelona and they proved that last season for them it was kind of an accident. They, they lose they, their biggest star, Ada Hederberg was uh, injured most of the season. So they are better, they are better than Barcelona. We were very excited be before this game because it really was a final with an ex excellent narrative, the two better teams in, in this moment in, in history and well, uh, uh, OL proof that they are in a higher step and Barcelona needs to uh, a, a bit uh, to think of what, what do they have to do. When mm. they were defeated in 2019 final in Budapest against OL, all the players, Alexia Putellas, they said that that was really useful to learn to stand up and, and to reach that level. I think they have to do the same because they didn't play well today. It was not good enough. Yeah, Gemma, it's interesting in that considering their form in La Liga, absolutely perfect, winning every single match and scoring goals for fun. Are you surprised there was such a golfing class today between Lyon and Barcelona? I know you mentioned the budget, but do you think the, the occasion maybe got to the Barcelona players slightly? Yeah, um, I think there was a problem with the euphoria, this uh, team. Uh, it was one of the, the things to take into consideration because they break uh, capacity crowd records. They have a 30-game uh, winning streak. Uh, th there was this euphoria surrounding them. A and to deal with that, I think it was some kind of difficult because in the last two games in La Liga, yeah, they win, but with a lot of problems to Rayo Vallecano and Atletico Madrid. I think something happened with dealing with that euphoria and also I think that, that, that La Liga uh, they need to reflection. It's going to be professional uh, just next year but the level that La Liga is, is showing right now is not good enough uh, for women. I mean uh, in Barcelona City, not Barca, they are professional but Espanol, they rivals the, the players are professional because they work selling t-shirts in the shop and then they train and then they play 
Barcelona dealing every day, every week with this kind of level, that they need a little step back. We'll see what happens next year, next year with the professionality, and because in the physicality, Olympique de Lyon was so much superior. So, so they need to take one step uh, ahead of them. Otherwise, they, it will be impo impossible. Actually, they have never been able to beat uh, OL. It's their absolutely nemesis, of course. Gemma, as always, thank you very much. So here it is then, La Liga matches on Sunday. All starts with Elche against Getafe, Osasuna against Mallorca. Now these games kick off at 2. Our coverage starts at 1.30. Of course, those three big matches for Mallorca, for Cadiz and Granada, all looking to avoid relegation. Meanwhile, the European place is still yet to be set. Barca take on Villarreal, Real Sociedad against Atleti, and it's Sevilla against Atleti Club. A busy day of all of those games live on ESPN Plus. It's also the final round of matches in Italy as well, and it's all about the two Milan sides, isn't it? Milan have fate in their own hands. If they get that win against or draw against Osuara, then that's it. They are good. Meanwhile, Inter need things to go their way if they're going to retain the title. Here it is then. Here's how things stand going into the final round of matches. Uh, Gab Marcotti, Milan's going to do this, aren't they? It's Milan's to lose. Of course, they have lost titles on the last day of the season before. Um, and also, Sassuolo are a very, very unpredictable uh, team. They're Serie A's box of chocolates. You never know what they're going to get. Uh, they're fearless. They're capable of scoring. Um, they're capable of conceding goals, too. So um, I don't think this is something Milan want to take for granted at all. Uh, a draw would be sufficient, as you said, if, even if Inter win, because they finish level on points and Milan would have the, 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 the tiebreaker by virtue of the head-to-head. -head. But it's not a chance you want to you wanna take. And if you're Inter, all you can do is say, let's pump Sampdoria full of goals and hope and hope that Sassuolo's young guns uh, go and, and somehow upend Milan. Stranger things have happened, um, so stay tuned. Indeed, and if you want more on the final round of matches in Italy, be sure to check out the latest edition of the Gab and Jules podcast, which is available to download over on the website. Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you as always for your tweets. What a treat Saturday you're here, Craig. Yeah, well, I had a choice this week. Oh, there you are. I was are. given a choice. I don't normally get choices, but I got a choice. A lot oh. of choices. There you are. Good. And the choice was this. Uh, bad choice, I must tell you. It was yep. a bad choice. Uh, Gab is here, as is uh, Jan. So many Somebody questions. Somebody says Jan, Jan will be back from Frankfurt yep. and he'll have sobered up from the celebrations and I said, uh, how will we know? Well, that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, and why didn't you get on the plane and just go with the players to Frankfurt if you're invited? Yeah, because I didn't win it, Dan. I mean, right. I was a fan. I was a fan and working uh, as a journalist on the game. Uh, I had my shirt in my bag, but I think there should be a limit of that. I mean, there was not enough hanger on. So uh, I went somewhere else and did another great job that you will see soon. Mm. Well, what did you do, Jan? I will tell you later. Oh, it's Haaland, isn't it? Haaland. He's, he's, that's his Mbappé to Real Madrid thing stuff. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> he's doing, he's doing Haaland's going on. Can I get to Madrid now? <laughs> He's going to be. He's now going to be spending half of his life in Manchester. Yes. Isn't he? Yeah, completely. Basically. Just stalking, stalking, stalking Ireland as he did in Dortmund. He will be in Manchester. Craig, would Mbappe winning the Champions League in Paris and becoming the league uh, all-time top goal scorer next season outweigh anything he could achieve in Madrid next season? No. <laughs> You want, another, you, want, you want me to expand it? Yes, that? I'd like you to go a little deeper if you okay. want. Okay. No. No. Why not? I don't think they'll win the Champions League. It could. It might happen. <laughs> French League. Go for it, Craig. Go for it, Craig. You'll oh, do it. Uh, look, I don't, the French League is okay. There's some good teams in the French League. Don't get me wrong, some good players. But it's not It's not a destination league right. for, for the elite world players from South America, wherever it is, and, and other places in Europe. And Asia and all that. No, it's not a destination place, so it's 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 good, but it's it's not really resonating much. I'm sorry. Um, have we got the front page of Marker? Should we show the front page of Marker here? This is uh, this is what uh, it led with on this be Sunday's edition. Very, oh yeah. Uh, 
Uh, well, we don't have it. I thought we had it. Um, but it, it, it says it says it takes a lot of class to play for Real Madrid with a picture of Kylian Mbappe signing his contract till 2025. Yeah. Um, they're taking it very well, Gab. Of course, is that it? Is it like he'll never play for Real Madrid ever? Look, I think a lot is going to depend, I think, on, on what happened in the past couple of weeks and I think what the next weeks bring. Um, you know, the way this, I know we heard the story about Florentino getting a WhatsApp and whatever. Um, Jan alluded to this on the show. We don't, we don't have any details yet about his contract. Now, if, if I were Mbappe, I would say, listen, all right, I'll sign a three-year contract for show but I want a release clause in a year's time because that gives me then the power to do what I want. Um, maybe this is what happened. I mean, I'm purely speculating here. I'm, I'm thinking what I would do if I was Mbappe. Uh, if you're Paris Saint-Germain at this stage, I mean, let's, let's just be realistic, right? Let's cut through the BS, right? Messi's there, he's parked there, you're paying a fortune for him. Neymar's there, he's parked there, you're paying a fortune for him. The World Cup is in November, and then after that, all bets are off about what happened to the Qatari ownership. So, if Mbappe goes to you and says, look, all right, I'll sign your contract, we'll have another go, we'll win, but I want a release clause so I can get out of here in a year's time, um, and go to Madrid, go somewhere else, uh, if, 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 if that's what, because that's what I want to do, right? Those are my terms. If you're Paris Saint-Germain, are you really going to say no to that? I don't think so. I don't think you're going to say, no, it's got to be three years, Killian. No. So, um, you know, when I put these things together, I don't see why it's impossible for this to continue unless Florentino feels that he's been humiliated by this process, unless he feels that he's been used. Mm -hmm. And it's entirely possible because, look, this leaves Real Madrid in a very bad place, right? No Holland, no Mbappe. You got to figure this out somehow. So unless he's the type of person to bear a grudge, I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that because Florentino's a businessman, because he's been he's worked in construction, or he owns construction companies around the world, the guy's got a good pair of stones on him, and he's had his setbacks, and he doesn't hold grudges, he understands it's business, and I think if that's the scenario, if he gets him bop in a year's time, I think he's okay with it. If he has to wait three years until this contract expires, Mbappe will still be just 26. I don't think he's going to shut the door on it. I don't think he's that kind of person. Is your boy There's Harlan no... regretting his decision, Jan? No, not at all. I don't. I have just my opinion because I don't think that they've been through that process and they choose Manchester City. Real Madrid had lost out on uh, Erling Braut-Holland and lost out on Mbappe. But I, I'm with, with Gab, there is no chance in the world that Mbappé will play there in Paris for three years. He doesn't give a free transfer away for fun. He will get all the money in the world. Uh, I'm, I won't take it all the way, but it, it's getting late in Norway. So I, I, will, I will nearly say that I'm surprised if he's going to play one season there. And the, I think the only thing that can guarantee now is that he will play there over the World Cup. Mm. I think we could, may and may have mm. the same conversation in January. Oh, Craig, you look forward to that? I can, I, I can also, I can also Clip think this, that, remember uh, this. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's it, because he got all cards in his hands. He's not only have the best cards, he got all 52 cards oh. in his hands. So he could put a clause in that he can go in the winter transfer window. It may be in there somewhere. So this is all about getting over the Qatari World Cup, and then we'll take it from there, I, I think. Oh, but Mbappe up... Before today, I had Mbappe up to about here. Right. <laughs> and today, I'm... Well, I'm up it's to big here. news, Craig. I'm here, here, somewhere here. And Benzema, of course, put on his Insta story, didn't he? Point, his, 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 his finger kind of pointing up to, to Real Madrid. It's like, a, I'm with Real Madrid. And what else did he say, Gam? Yeah. I don't know, I didn't see Benzema's Instagram story oh. when you doing the show with you. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't see it. Who follows his, who follows his Instagram story? Millions, <laughs> millions, <laughs> literally millions yeah, yeah. and millions of people do. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's change. We're not let's, a lot better to do. Let's change subject for a moment. For Craig, who would you pick of the ESPN crew to be your agent? That's from one for another. You never had an agent, did you? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. A couple. Uh, I didn't have an agent. Oh, well, there you are. I, I would take Craig. 
Shaka. Yeah. Shaka. 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 Send him in. It was against Stevie in there. Do <laughs> come out and go, I've got I, you Shepherd's Pie for life. I got you, uh, <laughs> I got you. A golf club that's free. Well, uh, what happened was, we were having these discussions <laughs> And I had this private thing, and I replied all on the email, as oh, I yeah. always do. Oh, Stevie loves a reply all on emails, like we all got yesterday once again. I think Shaq, well, I, 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 think Shaq could, I don't know, he could be a bit of a nasty sod. So. I'd want you, Craig. Me? Yes. I definitely want you as my agent going in there. Because you are just but what, ruthless. But what about Don? What about oh, Don, Don going into God. negotiations? <laughs> and, Don, and Don was, instead of 5%, he would say 50%. And then you suddenly, and, and then the manager, and then the president would say, okay, let's say 30 then. And he would say, okay. So I will have Don. Absolutely. Oh my God, imagine yeah, that. I am a bit ruthless with stuff like that. Yeah. I must admit. Yeah. Stubborn. My, uh, as you well know from here. <laughs> yes, yeah. My, yeah. Our boss's boss. Was in, <laughs> don't, don't ask him. No, I, Stevie, no. No. No, no, of course. Not. Just, just not happening. No, definitely. This shark's got a bit of. Uh, Frank, they might just give it just to shut him up. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> just, just, just shut up, Frank. Just take this. Don would get it all wrong. <laughs> Don would. Be Don would. If he was Don, you'd actually be on less than you were on the year before. Yeah, he would be horrendous. Yeah, but percentage-wise, it's going to be better over long. Oh yeah. No, exactly. Uh, well, Don would say something like, "Well, I've, I, I put on Twitter." <laughs> Yes, you are. I was calling that game. Uh, is Mbappe staying at PSG I'm good? <laughs> you can hear him now with this guy. Okay, Gab. Is Mbappe staying at PSG? Well, no, let's do you, Jan, because you're Champions League man. Is Mbappe staying at PSG good for Champions League viewers? Instead of a Champions League finalist this year adding a young megastar, it spreads out. Top world talent making one more top team to make Champions League more exciting. Neutral fans don't want next year to be just three super teams, Real Madrid, Liverpool and City. Well, I'm not, uh, well, we've discussed that at, at the show today. I mean, uh, that you can win the knockout games and all that is easier and so on and so on. And Pep Guardiola apparently says it's easier to, to, to win the Champions League. <laughs> but uh, OK, uh, but, uh, but now I, I, I would have loved, I must say, I would have loved to see Mbappé at Real Madrid. I think that would be fantastic. And we've seen Real Madrid there in the final now. They could have been out a couple of rounds ago. So uh, I, I, I'm not fear that it would be a Super League kind of thing. It's been, a, I mean, I've got some breaking news for all fans. We've had in the Champions League a Super League for many years. Most of the teams who's been going all the way and been in semi-finals or the quarter-finals have been the wealthiest club anyway. So I wouldn't say a big difference there. He's staying at PSG now, makes that PSG game maybe a bit more entertaining, but you've still got Neymar and Messi there. So, but I would love to see him around Madrid shirt. For Gab, anyway, Chelsea can get rid of Lukaku and sign Lewandowski. Question. Well, I, again, I'm sorry. I, I know that we're all supposed to say Lukaku's overweight and he's lazy and he's horrible <laughs> and he's mean. He's not. He's substantially younger than Lewandowski, who, by the way, I believe turns 34 uh, in August. Lewandowski would be making a lot more money than Lukaku. It's difficult to shift Lukaku because nobody's going to give you anywhere near what you paid for him. Why would you do this? Why would you, why would you sell Lukaku? I'm not always is the plan sell Lukaku to Real Madrid because they've missed out on Mbappe and buy, buy sign Lewandowski for what? For a year? For two years? And you're back to square one? Um, I, I, I think the Lukaku hate. I, you know, it's got to be modulated. They made a commitment. They committed a lot of money. Right now, they don't. They don't. They don't even have a new owner anymore, right? They, they're still waiting for this freaking government license. If it doesn't get renewed on May 31st, they'll cease trading anyway. So why don't we just pump the brakes on this one a little bit? Let Lewandowski be there and listen to Oliver Kahn because he always speaks the truth. He has a contract. Yeah, I'm not, he will fulfill the contract. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily talking about. Uh, well, I'm not talking. I'm not necessarily summarizing this about Lewandowski, but Gab. Chelsea, Thomas Tuchel, ownership, whoever it is, fan base, can ill afford to stumble along for another season with a front line that's not operating, with a front man who there is a huge doubt whether he's going to be able to do it for Chelsea at a level they need to bridge the gap 
to Liverpool and City. I mean, can, well, che- can Chelsea afford you, to just you, say, well, we've, we've paid a lot of money for him, so we're just going to keep rumbling along with him and see if it works? Or do they try and cut the losses, get what they can and move on somewhere else? I, I, I mean, they can't, they're almost 20 points off the, whatever they are off the top of the league. I, they can ill afford that to happen again. That's one way to look at it, or you could look at it and say, like, we're the, you know, we're the best non-freakishly good team in the Premier League. We reached two domestic cup finals, went, lost them both on penalties, and got, nicked out, got knocked out of the Champions League in bizarro uh, circumstances by Real Madrid after, wearing, after, after winning at the, at the Bernabeu, where supposedly 90 minutes is an eternity and blah, 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 blah. Um, we're not in such bad shape. Uh, if we have to sell money, if we have to sell players, um, maybe we find somebody to take Timo Werner away, or Hakim Ziyech, or or one of Ross Barkley, um, one of these other guys. You know, um, I, I I think realistically, you can take a loss on a player, but it's difficult given Lukaku's wages that they signed him to, given the season he's had, and given the amount of money you paid for uh, you paid for him, and the fact he's only been there one year, so it's not, you know, it's only it's only been amortized a little bit. It's really, really difficult to move him on. And I think unless Tuchel says, no, I can't work with this guy, um, you go to him and you say, hey, Tommy, um, we're not in a good place right now, uh, ownership-wise. Why don't you make it work with Lukaku last season and, uh, or, or next season? And unless Tuchel says, uh, no, it's either him or me, I can't work with this guy and Axel Divish, and at that point, maybe you say, all right, maybe Tuchel, we want to keep Tuchel happy, we move him on. But... Um, I, I don't, I don't see that happening. Um, I mean, in the end, they knew who they were signing when they signed Lukaku, and I don't think you can just write it off after one season. Jan, what's the point of voted player of the season solely based on the recent memory of his four goals haul? Because his numbers do not compare to both men in the Golden Boot race. Those men are Son and Salah. Was De Bruyne voted player of the season solely based on the recent memories? I think that Kevin De Bruyne is a fantastic player. You can give it to him. There is a couple of other players you can give it to as well. But I, as our uh, expert on this uh, voting is Craig Burley, so I will be very um, careful now with my words. But I think that De Bruyne uh, deserve it. So you got it? I didn't know I, was, I missed it. Yeah, you got it today. Uh, I, Phil Foden, young player. Didn't pay any attention to it. So, But I, look, people get caught <laughs> People get caught. The PFA vote? Yeah. No, no. This is the Premier League vote. Anyway, I mean, that's a Premier League. We love awards. Well, wait, well, what's that? What's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What, what kind of like Tim Pot award is that? Uh, it's uh, like, voted there's by. There's two awards. It's voted by the, the fans. PFA award Gav, from the those players who, who, who dedicate themselves to the game. Tin Pot is not how they were describing. Exactly, and it just it's shows you how strong the brain like, is. Listen. listen. <laughs> <laughs> they are true. Oh no, because it's all those men, because Man City are a far more popular club and have many more hundreds of millions of fans worldwide than Liverpool, which is why De Bruyne won it, right? Is that what we're talking? Look, there's two awards that matter. Personally, I don't think any of these individual awards matter, but there's two that matter historically. One is the PFA award, which is voted on by the players. And even that, because the votes come in so early, I don't know how important that is. The other one is the Football Writers Award, which Stevie Nichol, of course, once won. Um, and that's voted on by football writers. I, this Premier League award voted on by players over the internet, voted on by bots. You don't like democracy. What is this? You don't concept? like democracy. Are you, are you, are you, are you, Why are football writers' I, votes I, more I, important I, listen, than fans, Gab, Gab? What's wrong with Gab, you? Gab, 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 Gab. Now you just uh, explored yourself <laughs> as the elitism <laughs> of this football world. I mean, them <laughs> fans could vote and you spoke against yourself because if De Bruyne for Manchester City is winning, means that the old Manchester United United fans and all Liverpool fans in the world, they didn't get their players through. How good <laughs> is Dev Kevin De Bruyne, you elitistic kind of Italian prince? Yeah. Oh, he, come on. He, <laughs> he, he, he must be a heck of a lot better and more popular than Mo Salah. That, that, that sounds like a, listen, I don't have a problem with De Bruyne winning, right? For me, De Bruyne and Salah are both fine choices. But I, I love it. Like, oh, look, we need some attention. Let's hire a PR company and let's make up another award, which wasn't here last year. And then let's go and get the media to talk about it. That's all we're talking about here. I mean, there's been an award. People voted De Bruyne or they voted for Sala or maybe they like Hongmin Son. Maybe it's Gerard Bowen. Would have been my choice, I'm, but whatever. I'm, um, 
And that's that. Let's stick with that. And what about the foot? But Gab, but what about the football writers? Have you seen Ballon d'Or or all these kind of uh, international awards when there is a football writer in some country? I won't mention any country. They're making players that we haven't heard I, of. I, I, I know where you're three. going. And that is the great thing. That is the great yeah, thing. Yeah, look. I think that's nonsense too. I don't care about the Ballon d'Or. I think it's just become like a freak show popularity contest as well. And sometimes, look, I, and I don't have a problem with the people who've won it because the last 15 years we've been best with, blessed with Messi and Cristiano and it's hard to go wrong with one of those two. And I know it's very important to the players, but this isn't a measure of anything. And we waste far too much time talking about it. And I feel like Craig Burley would probably agree with me. No, the football yes. fans, Gab, you take away the, the issue. The football fans, the, 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 the voters, the, 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 the shareholders of football have voted Kevin De Bruyne. And you say it's nonsense yeah. because some football writer can't vote. I mean, elitism at the yeah. highest level, Gab. I, please ask Jan, will he take responsibility for Haaland if he flops in Manchester City, just like Werner, Sancho and Havertz? If I take the, yes, <laughs> of course, of course I will. It's, I, I, I put Werner, Harvards and, and all of them in England uh, because I felt that was the right thing. Uh, so, of course, I will take the full responsibility. Uh, earlier this week, Craig referred to Nottingham there's, there's Forest. There's a money back guarantee, right, Jan? Yep. <laughs> earlier this week, Craig referred to Nottingham Forest as we. No, I didn't. Thought everyone should know. No, I didn't. Apparently, apparently, Josh Ooh. Hartley heard it. <laughs> No to <laughs> Gab, Craig actually really likes Forrest. Like, really? He should do. I he know, should. but Craig doesn't he like should. anything. No, well, I don't, I, I mean, the fact that my son and, Wait, but and my grandson... I, I thought there was a big derby Forrest rivalry. <laughs> yeah, there, were, there is, but unfortunately... I bought, That's I, disappointing. I, it, was, it was mentioned to me when I was a Derby County player that I did buy a house in Nottingham. Right. For, for reasons that will remain... Uh, Undisclosed. Oh, that sounds, sounds intriguing now. However, now that uh, my son is a season ticket holder at the city ground and my grandson is absolutely mad on Forest, I have a keen eye on them. Perfect. No, it's Nothing nice. More. No, it's well. Nothing Ooh, more. A keen nice. eye. Yeah, but you, you've, I've never known you have a keen eye on anything since yes, I've known you. Have. you. What? Yeah, I've got golf. Yes, I know, but golf doesn't play in the Premier League. <laughs> 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 Problem one. <laughs> Rugby doesn't play in the Premier Rugby. League. <laughs> no, I've got a keen eye on them. It's I know. Been, I think it's going to be. I hope they get promoted for that reason. Um, be nice. Searching for tickets. I think oh. I may have stumbled on a couple. Oh, perfect. I'm sure, I'm sure Gab's got contacts. Gab's got contacts everywhere. We'll sort you out. Anyway, back to the uh, thing. No. Move on. Uh, Jan. Trying to say something. Did you ever. Yes. How many bloody questions is of the day? There's two more. Saturday. There's two more. Because Jan and Gab are on blabbering away. Last Jan, last did you ever. Saturday. <laughs> tick. Last. Jan, did you ever use a hairband yeah. in your footballing career? No. No, I didn't. Uh, I, I would love. I love to be a that striker with a long hair, the number nine. Yeah. And then I got my hair. I got a bit a hair a bit long, and if I missed the chance, I would always blame my hair. So I always have. A, I had a short hair when I played. That's why now I take. I take my long hair when I'm getting older. Uh, but as a football player, no. Well, I trained my son's team when he was 16, and I said, if any of you have a hairband, you won't play. Uh, wow. and, um, uh, so that was a rule. <laughs> they were all rubbish because no they couldn't see. Sorry, Jan, that's not you were calling Gabalitis. That's really not very 2022. No. No, I'm sorry. No, and, 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 Craig, and Craig, imagine this when, when my son played for Hamilton. Air and uh, and Green of Morton, he played with a hairband. So I'm a bad, bad educator of myself. Yeah, um, he's like old kids if they don't listen to you. We learned yesterday, Craig, <laughs> that your golf handicap is two. Uh, actually, incorrect. Oh. As of this morning, it had gone up to three. Oh, well, there we go. However, on the show yesterday, it was two. Right, there we are. Would you trade your golf handicap for the chance to have Jan's great hair instead? What's wrong with that? <laughs> well, you've got a little bit. Excuse me, I think my hair's great. Right, for the moment. The, well, the, 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 uh, the areas that are still growing, I think, are great. So, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Didn't your daughter throw you under the bus ones? When it comes to your oh, hair? I'd still be here, wouldn't I? I'm no, still here. with regards to your hair? She may have, uh, she may have uh, brought up uh, a, 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 
<laughs> a, uh, a shampoo that I was, a product, thank yeah. you very much. She may have brought up a product that I was trying out at the time. Uh, in, front of one, in front of one of my good friends who I was on holiday with. And what was the, what was said products? Um... Well, my wife sent my daughter up to the hotel room in Miami, actually, uh, a few years ago, to get something for her friends right. to do something. And my daughter said, is it next to Dad's special shampoo? <laughs> <laughs> next to that special shampoo, my good mate Rob, who was laying on the sun lounger, came up like that and went, Special shampoo? He was on the phone to all my mates in Nottingham, hey, he's got special shampoo. And this shampoo right. was supposed to just make, keep your hair nice and thick. Right, it was like a thickening agent. No, it wasn't a thickening agent, it was like, oh, it was whatever. Special I just have Craig, have you sued them? Have you sued them? <laughs> I, 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 I stopped, uh, I've stopped using it, yeah, many, many years ago. What happened is, what happened, this is true, it's, it's come, it just keeps growing so thick, it right. was uncontrollable. Really? Yeah. Just too much? So, but she did, she said to me, she said to me, she, uh, she said to mummy, Okay, Mum, I'll go and get it. Is, is it just next to Dad's special shampoo? And I was like, Thank you very much, guys. Hey, but there's people on the, there's people we've had in this show. They've had the full yep. bush. Yes. Off. Yep. Full. What do you call it? Transplant. transplant. Hair transplant. Transplant. Yes. Yep. There you go. <laughs> And that, no, it's not Robbo and Frank LaBeouf, because that'd be a full <laughs> trip. <laughs> then you definitely wouldn't be getting your money back. <laughs> that, that is that. ESPN FC is back on your screens. Would you go? Would you get that done? Well, if it was called upon, a hair transplant? No, it's not called upon. Well, I told you it's, it's not called upon. I know, upon you're close. Because you're it's close. coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's the final day of the Premier League tomorrow. Join us.